Okay, here we go. Um, Ryan Pursoon, I'm the district park supervisor up here on the middle and upper Oahe. Um, Adam kind of alluded to this here just a second ago about the passion of our locals in our area. I'm, I'm very fortunate and privileged to be a park supervisor in a district where we have so many examples of community and organiz organizational ownership and involvement in our parks. Uh, I put together this presentation here to shine a light on another partnership that occurred in a park, this one at Swan Creek Recreation Area. Uh, what you see pictured here is a result of that collaboration, that partnership uh, between the Parks Department and, in this case, the South Dakota Walleye Classic Incorporated out of Acasca. Uh, this indoor fish cleaning station was constructed over a previous location uh, where an outdoor seasonal fish cleaning table previously existed. Um, not what I'm sure a lot of you aren't are familiar with our, our open to the air fish cleaning stations that are only open in the summertime. Um, this facility, this building uh, was built over the top of that and replaced the outdoor structure. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the financial logistics in just a few seconds here, but I wanted to stress the point that this facility was constructed nearly 100% by outside of the department fundraising, uh, fishing tournament proceeds and donations. So. Uh, I'll also discuss a little bit more ways that this is not a financial burden on uh, game fish and parts or our taxpayers, which I think is kind of special. Uh, that's kind of the route that we've been going with these indoor facilities, both in Mobridge and, uh, and at Swan Creek. Um, speaking of the Mobridge, um, I want to show you a little example of our previous outdoor open to the air fish table and, uh, and the current facility that's, that's sitting in its place. Speaking of Mobridge, uh, some of you are aware that in 2016, uh, the Parks Division partnered with the Mobridge Tourism Committee uh, to construct an indoor year-round enclosed conditioned uh, facility at Indian Creek Recreation Area. Uh, this facility and partnership has been a huge success, providing a place for sportsmen and women to, uh, to clean and dispose their fish during the winter ice fishing season, which we really didn't have before anywhere. So. Uh, we didn't reinvent the wheel here at Swan Creek. Uh, we stuck with what was successful in, in our construction of our building up at Indian Creek Recreation Area in Mobridge. Uh, we made just a few minor adaptations to enhance the user experience, uh, mechanical efficiencies, and overall maintenance of the building. Like I said, uh, what you see is, is the previous, in the upper left is the previous open to the air fish to clean table and what exists in this place today. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about project inception. Uh, we did mention the Mobridge Tourism Committee and our partnership we had there. Uh, we partnered with them in 2016 where very similarly, they donated the money to put an enclosure around our existing fish table um, on an existing location at Indian Creek Recreation Area. Uh, this was a huge partnership. Um, it was very successful. Um, but that also wasn't something that we just invented. Uh, we kind of made, made copy and, and took notes from an indoor fish cleaning facility up in Devils Lake, North Dakota, where a bunch of our department and uh, Mobridge Tourism Committee members actually flew up there and, and looked at how they constructed theirs and kind of modeled ours after that. So this has been uh, an evolution for us. Um, talking about the Swan Creek fish cleaning facility in itself, um, it, the Casco Walleye Classic Committee inquired about the previous partnership of the facility in Mulbridge. And in January of 2019, myself and Dan Richards, who is the Indian Creek Park manager, we did a presentation to the Walleye Classic Committee on how the Mulbridge facility came to be. Um, in February of that year, uh, we got a partnership request um, from the Casco Walleye Classic that, that they wanted to partner with Game Fish and Parks and do a similar thing at, at Swan Creek. Uh, we started drafting plans, uh, blueprints, making a plan, um, getting some estimates together on what this might cost. And in October, a uh, memorandum of agreement was signed that uh, we were going to proceed forward with this. Um, our construction started right after that in late October. And in May 2020, our facility was opened up to the public for use. So this is the first winter that we've had use of that facility. 
Um, ice came a little bit late, but it was heavily used and greatly appreciated. Um, so I would consider it a very big success up there. Um, moving on a little bit more in detail about the memorandum of agreement that we put together. Um, ultimately, it defines why. Um, it's an agreement between South Dakota Game Fish and Parks and the Casco Valley Classic Incorporated uh, for our mutual desire to provide, to provide an enclosed fish cleaning station at Swan Creek. Uh, lining up with our mission statement, it enhances year-round recreational opportunities at Swan Creek um, and the surrounding areas, and it results in economic benefit to Acasta and our surrounding areas. So um, it's a very big deal for our area, not just Acasta, but our neighboring towns, um, Baudel, uh, Selby, Hoven, um, Ipswich, all the way to Aberdeen. I mean, it's a big impact for our community in our area. Uh, the sign here is actually the exterior partnership sign, the actual sign that's on the outside of the building. Uh, that was part of our, our MOA is to make sure that we're giving kudos to the Akatsawali Classic folks. So um, that's probably displayed on the exterior of the building. Um, more in depth on the memorandum of agreement. Um, essentially, it was the Walleye Classic will provide the funding uh, for the indoor facility. Uh, Game Fish and Parks will then own, operate, and maintain the facility for public benefit. Uh, that's in a nutshell what our, our agreement was. Um, as far as the terms were, uh, it was estimated, and I would say that that we stuck to this budgeted amount, uh, that the Casco Walleye Classic would be responsible for the total construction cost of the projects. And that's, that's everything from ground up. That's the building that you see and utilize when you get to Swan Creek to clean fish. Um, $85,000 was the estimated budget and they did stick to that. Um, so the Casco Walleye Classic and a lot of other, we'll call them stakeholders, investors, um, we'll touch on that here in a minute too. Uh, they came up through fundraising and other means, $85,000. Um, that's not to say that this facility cost that because there was a fair amount of contractor donations that weren't included. A lot of our contractors are sportsmen and users of the area. Uh, they donated their time. Uh, our trusses were donated by trust pros. Uh, a lot of things were donated to this facility. So it's really hard to come up with a number that says is what it's going to cost to build these. Um, it does include, like I said, the table, the grinder, uh, little things like our hand dryers, small miscellaneous items. Uh, we put a second door in there, which I'll talk about. Um, all, all existing infrastructure from the old facility, uh, the septic system, that was all reused. Uh, that's a big monetary item. I know I get a lot of questions on what does a facility like this cost? Um, it'd be a whole lot different if you're, if you're building it from zero. Um, we didn't build this from zero. We enhanced what was already there. Um, another big item um, to kind of support the, the financial um, help and, and not put a strain on, on my operating budget in the, in the Game Fish and Parks is uh, the Wally Classic um, did put in the memorandum of agreement that they would provide our department an annual stipend uh, for maintenance. And this number kind of came about of what our projected, I mean, we did a business plan, what our projected costs um, in the off season would be for, for maintenance and all that stuff. And, and we came right around that $7,000, uh, what would be the additional cost on, on my staff, uh, our supplies, our labor. And uh, the Akaskawai Classic folks said, yeah, we'll, we'll pay you $7,000 annually to offset those costs. So again, truly a partnership of our area. Um, it means a lot. So uh, payments are made um, no later than October 1st of every year, and we've already received our first payment as of last year. So our responsibility is to pro provide and install a table and grinder. Uh, we utilized the, the table and grinder that was already there. We didn't have to buy that. Those are not cheap. I mean, they're about $45,000. Um, we had to remove the equipment and the structure, to prepare for the construction. Um, and then we provided the year-round maintenance to the, to the facility. Um, Planning, I do have to throw out a couple of kudos here. Um, FM, FMG Engineering out of Rapid City uh, kind of did all of our blueprinting, and uh, Jason Hines was our engineer. Again, uh, Jason has uh, a connection to this area. Uh, he donated his time, and his firm donated kind of the engineering on it. 
again, to not put a burden or on, on our department and our engineering staff. We really wanna to try to build this without impacting negatively anybody. Um, so as you can see, we have really nice blueprints um, of how the building should be made. Our floor plan. And one thing on this floor plan that we kind of evolved from our Mobridge and uh, up in Devil's Lake fish clean stations is we did put a bathroom in this. Uh, uh, one of the few that I know of that has an indoor bathroom. Uh, logistically, that's just another septic tank uh, because we don't want uh, our sewage going into our, our fish waste. So um, not much of a not much of a deal to make a bathroom inside of these, but it does require another septic tank. Um, mechanical room, um, very open to uh, to users. Um, I'll get into some final pictures here in a minute, but uh, just kind of going through the process of construction. I know I'm talking a lot, but does anybody have any questions that we're, we're at at this point for me? Any comments or questions from the commission? Quick question. Commissioner Whitmire. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Whitmire. Um, on the water, uh, I'm assuming with the fish fitting station, you were concerned with the potable water. Um, is that, uh, uh, what is the water source, if I can ask on that? Is it for uh, um, water or what have you? If I understand the question right, was it what's the water source to operate this facility? Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, I mean, or is it uh, um, as a well? Uh, this is a rural water. This comes from web water. Um, it's connected to our rural water system. Uh, so that's where the water comes from for this project. Um, just like our old facilities, the wastewater goes into septic tanks. Um, in this case, uh, lift station to a drain field and perks out to the drain field. So. Uh, that's water from start to finish, I guess. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, continuing on then, uh, construction. Uh, Bill Hines, a uh, familiar name, his, his son Jason uh, did the engineering, but uh, Bill is a retired contractor. Uh, Bill is a mover and a shaker. He's a park user. He's an avid fisherman. Um, Bill actually has a lot of connections with game fishing parks. His business, uh, construction business out of Aberdeen, actually built a lot of our our wildlife buildings, especially the one in Mulbridge. So he's giving back a little bit to us. So Bill, thankfully, was a lead project manager for this. He made sure the plans uh, got stuck to, that that everything rolled as it was supposed to. Um, so a huge shout out to, to Bill. Um, but he took our blueprints and turned them into fruition. Um, some pictures here of, of the, the footings and foundations being constructed. Again, this is uh, in October of 2020. Um, the radiant heat that we put in the floor, uh, we have several different types of heat. We have the radiant heat, which is our primary heat for this facility in the winter time. Um, but we also have a forced heat uh, in a boiler system that uh, if, when the door opens and closes, it can warm up that air really quickly, but primarily, uh, radiant heat in the floor helps dry the floor so we don't have slippery conditions and wet conditions. Um, we put the radiant heat below the concrete slab so that if we did anchor the table or whatever to the concrete, we didn't puncture any PEX lines. So uh, uh, radiant heat went in well before everything else. Um, as you see in the upper left picture, uh, polystyrene foam was put down, radiant heat was attached to it. Uh, and then we actually put sand on top of the tubing uh, and then poured our concrete. So uh, made it very user-friendly. If we wanna make adjustments or, or attach a, a table to the floor, we don't have to worry about puncturing lines. Uh, this is uh, the skeleton starting to be erected and enclosed. Uh, the floor was then poured after the building was up and conditioned so we could control that. Again, we're talking winter weather here uh, and pouring concrete. So. Uh, they did a very good job. Uh, the upper picture is from one direction. The lower picture uh, depicts a bathroom and maintenance room that we did not yet have the floor poured on. Um, I'm going to touch on funding before we get into the actual pictures of the facility as a finished product, but uh, the partnerships, it was huge. Uh, it was made possible by the following donator, don donors. Excuse me. This sign is in the inside of the fish cleaning facility. Uh, I'm sure we missed some people, but these are the ones that got that made the list. 
Um, the biggest one was the South Dakota Walleye Classic Folk. And uh, the tournament they put on every year, they had proceeds. They are a, a nonprofit organization. Uh, so they wanted to reinvest those proceeds, which, which is what this, where we started, where we got started with this. Uh, the town of Acasta, the Acasta Development Corporation, uh, Swan Lake Sportsman's Club out of Hoban. Uh, I could read through the whole list. They all deserve a huge kudos. Um, but, uh, but yeah, they're all instrumental in raising the funds. Um, Trust Pros, I want to talk about them. They, they donated all the rafters. Um, is very big deal. Um, they did have a $10,000 challenge and there were quite a few people that participated in a $10,000 challenge and donating that much money. Um, so very big deal. Our annual stipend, that's an interesting way that they decided to raise money for $7,000 every year. Uh, the Casca Tavern and Bait Shop, small little uh, bait shop bar and grill, fantastic food, by the way. Um, they sell pull tabs and the pull tab proceeds go directly towards that maintenance stipend, which I thought was pretty interesting and works out really well. So back to the facility in itself, um, previous picture, uh, what you see is our building. Um, we have our Swan, Swan Creek fish board that we had existing where for social media purposes, it does depict that this is on Lake Oahe and the Missouri River in Acasta. Uh, that's been a, a huge, I guess, um, advertising for on social media for us. People hang their fish and and they can see people can see where those fish were caught. Um, everything from the rocks to the flags, uh, the landscaping, all that is all part of uh, uh, our donors and and their their labor. Very nice facility. Here's the indoor. Uh, this is kind of what everybody loves the most about it. Um, air conditioned, heated, wonderful place to clean your fish both during the season and, and uh, in the winter season. Um, the top picture is coming in the main door. You can see our donator sign to the left, um, our bathroom there in the other corner. And I just shot a little picture of the bathroom down there in the corner just so that you can see that addition that we have to this facility that we don't have in other facilities, uh, our maintenance room. And one thing that we did add kind of right at the last minute was a, a, a back door, uh, emergency exit. Um, and uh, that was just something that was mentioned uh, when it comes to confined spaces, it, it's really nice to have another means of egress. So, uh, so we did put another door in there that's, that's used specifically for exit only. Look in the other direction from our maintenance room to the front door, you can see the, the, the sponsor or donator sign. Code hooks for people to, uh, to hang their winter gear up in the winter time. Um, you can see our heater, our little bug zapper. Uh, so we don't have any flies. We have a really nice little bug zapper in the summertime. And when it comes to parking lot, this was something that we knew we had to do after the fact. Uh, we really don't have adequate parking uh, at this fish cleaning station. Um, again, we did some talking and planning through our department, but ultimately uh, FMG engineering kind of came up with this plan on, uh, on carving this parking lot in. Uh, so we went through all of our, our steps of clearances and everything to, uh, to allow us to move some dirt around to make a parking lot. Uh, here's some pictures of that work. Um, the gravel was all donated to us. Um, the upper left picture, we actually had kind of a, a spring that was coming out in that area. Uh, so my staff and I put some uh, PVC lines in there as a French drain to drain that water out. And you can see one of my employees there uh, connecting one of the legs of the PVC that we put in a, a bed of rock to, to help get any moisture out of this parking lot. Um, the upper right, you can see another employee, he's roller packing. Uh, the lot after we got it all nice and moist to, to pack really well. And uh, what it looks like today is the, is the bottom corner. Um, we would like to get some asphalt surface treatment on this, whether it's a pad or, or a nice chip seal. Uh, so we're not tracking and creating wet spots, uh, you know, with boats dripping and things like that. Um, that's, that's hopefully something for the future. I mentioned the bug zapper. Uh, a lot of people ask us about that. Uh, we did that in Mobridge. That's not something that we 
invented up here at Swan Creek. That's something that we've been using. It works really well. Uh, same thing with smell. A lot of people ask us about smell. We don't have a trap um, in this indoor facility uh, to stop those septic gases from coming indoors. So we put a fan um, in between the tanks and our drain, and that fan grabs those gases and smells and shoots them out the roof. So the indoor facility smells really nice and clean. This is a picture taken in January 2020, just prior to construction. I'm sorry, it should have been October 2020, just prior to construction. Um, the existing facility, uh, where the parking lot is now. Um, any questions on how we got from this point to where we are today? I'm kind of finishing up my slideshow here. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Uh, Commissioner Lockett. Uh, yeah, Commissioner Lockett here. When you speak of Bill Hines, the uh, retired uh, contractor, I just thought I'd mention he's not only an uh, avid fisherman, he's an avid Northern State basketball fan. And, and I was at a basketball game and he came up at halftime and said, we want to do this. We want to get this project done. And uh, I called Mike Kosowski and, and made him aware of it. And I think he contacted you, Ryan. And uh, I think a big driving force was uh, a ladies' room, a place where comfort yeah. station for ladies, that was a big thing because they didn't have anything before on that. <clears throat> anyway, I, I, I wanted to tell you, Ryan, that I would check in with Bill once in a while. I'd see him at the ball game or I'd see him somewhere, and he was very complimentary to you. He said, that, I'd say, are you getting everything you need? Said Ryan is doing everything he can do to help us. So evidently, you had a really good working relationship with him. Well, I appreciate that. Um, like I said, I'm privileged. I I have these relationships with a lot of our people, uh, the Lake Hiddenwood Association, uh, the Mobile Tourism. Uh, a lot of people down here closer to the Gettysburg area. There's a lot more outside public, private stakeholders sharing interest in our parks and what I think a lot of people realize. Um, our, the people that use our parks up here, they, they really feel the ownership. They invest in them. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very special thing to, to have that type of relationship. So thank you. Any other questions or comments? Well, great job, Ryan, you and your team and putting that together. And uh, that's a, a really great example of collaboration. So uh, right. again, uh, great work, uh, good outcome, and uh, thank you for your presentation. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.